The classification of acute myelogenous leukemia. The latest WHO classification relies on diversity of acute myelogenous leukemias in terms of genetics, cellular lineage, and the degree of maturation to divide acute myelogenous leukemia into four different categories. We will compare and contrast the latest WHO guidelines with the previous classification of the French, American, British system used the FAB system, and we'll also try to evaluate the specific features of each of these variant and the prognosis associated with them. Class 1 of the WHO includes acute myelogenous leukemia with genetic abnormalities. There are five different types in this, where type 1 is associated with the translocation A21, which results in RUNX1 ETO fusion gene. It is the M2 variant of the FAB system with a favorable prognosis. The features associated with this variant is a myelocytic maturation, the presence of R-rods and abnormal cytoplasmic granules. The second variant is AML with inversion 16, resulting in a CBF beta-1 MYH11 fusion gene. It is represented as M4EO by the FAB system with a favorable prognosis showing myelocytic and monocytic differentiation and abnormal eosinophilic precursors. The third variant is AML with 1517 translocation, resulting in the RARA PML fusion gene, which is the M3 variant of the FAB system, showing an intermediate type of prognosis with maximum number of ROTs in them and maximum number of faggots. It is a microgranular variant with a high incidence of disseminated intravascular coagulation. The fourth variant is AML with inversion 11 v which results in a diverse MLL fusion gene with a poor prognosis. The fifth variant is AML with normal cytogenetics and a mutated NPM gene which codes for the nucleophosphamine. This variant usually has a better prognosis. The class 2 of the WHO is acute myelogenous leukemia, which is therapy related. These tend to have worse prognosis and can be due to alkylating therapy or following topoisomerase type 2 inhibitors. In alkylating therapy, myelodysplastic syndromes like cytogenetic changes with a latency of about 2 to 8 years is a common feature. AML following topoisomerase type 2 inhibitors result after 1 to 3 years of latency and also involve translocations in the long arm of the chromosome number 11 resulting in the MLL. The third class as per the WHO classification is acute myelogenous leukemia with myelodysplastic syndrome like features which usually tend to have poor prognosis with dysplastic features and cytogenetic changes of myelodysplastic syndrome. The last and the fourth category as per the WHO classification is acute myelogenous leukemia, which is not otherwise specified. It is further subdivided into seven categories, with category one being acute myelogenous leukemia, which is minimally differentiated. It is classified as M0 by the FAB system with an intermediate type of prognosis, which tend to be negative for myeloperoxidase, and the myeloid antigens are detected by flow cytometry. All of the variants of class 4 tend to have an intermediate type of prognosis. The second variant among the class 4 is AML without maturation, which is classified under M1 of the FAB system. They tend to show more than 3% of blast cells which are myeloperoxidase positive. The third variant is acute myelogenous leukemia with myelocytic maturation classified under M2 which show a full range of myelocytic differentiation. The fourth variant is acute myelogenous leukemia with myelomonocytic maturation. They are classified under the M4 category of the FAB system showing myelocytic and monocytic differentiation. The fifth variant is AML with monocytic maturation, classified as M5, 
under the FAB system showing monocytic differentiation. The sixth variant is AML with erythroid maturation classified under the M6 of the FAB system showing erythroid or myeloid subtype with more than 50% dysplastic mature erythrocyte precursors and more than 20% myeloid precursors. Another variety with pure erythroid subtype with more than 80% erythroid precursors without any myeloblast can also be seen in this variant. The seventh and the last variant is AML with megakaryocytic maturation classified as the M7 subtype of the FAB system. Here the megakaryoblasts predominate and are detected by megakaryoblast specific markers like glycoprotein 2B3A, von Willebrand factor, so on and so forth. They are associated with bone marrow fibrosis and pancytopenia and is the most common variant of acute myelogenous leukemia which is seen in patients with Down syndrome. The previous outdated classification of AML is now replaced by the WHO classification. The FAB system divides AML into eight subtypes M0 through M7 and is based on the degree of maturation from M0 to M3 and it is also based on the lineage of the leukemic blast from M4 through M7. Now let's have a quick recap of some of the most important points we've discussed so far. The first one is that the most common type of acute myelogenous leukemia according to the FAB classification is M2 AML with maturation as seen with translocation 821. Maximum number of ROTs are seen with the M3 variant of the AML as per the FAB classification which is named as acute promyelocytic leukemia. They are myeloperoxidase positive and sudan black positive. The most common cytogenetic abnormality seen is a translocation 1517 with a number of faggot cells. In the M4 variant, acute myelomonocytic leukemia or the Negeli type, both myelocytic and monocytic differentiation is seen. The most common cytogenetic abnormality that is noticed is in version 16. Myeloblasts are myeloperoxidase positive and ROTs are usually visible in myeloblasts. Whereas on the other hand, monoblastic cells are nonspecific esterase positive. Some of the important nonspecific esterases include alpha naphthyl acetate esterase, alpha naphthyl butyrate esterase, naphthol AS acetate esterase, and naphthol ASD acetate esterase. The M6 or the acute erythroleukemia is also called as digolemo disease. The least common AML is M7, which is the acute megakaryocytic leukemia, and this produces a dry tap on bone marrow aspiration. Therefore, it was previously known as acute myelofibrosis. Remember that M7 is the least common AML, but it becomes the most common variant of AML among patients with pre-existing Down syndrome. Tissue infiltration with hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, gum hypertrophy is seen with M4 and M5 variants of acute myelogenous leukemia. Disseminated intravascular coagulation is more common in the M3 variant of AML. Chloromas are more common in the M2 variant and sometimes nonspecific esterases may become positive in the M3 variant of the AML. Now let's move on to diagnosis of acute myelocytic leukemia. The investigation of choice is obviously flow cytometry. Patients usually present with normocytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and leukocytosis. Know that the white cell counts can be low or high. Hyperleukocytosis may also occur with white cell counts more than 100,000 cells per milliliter. A large percentage of blast cells, which are two to four times the size of an RBC, are usually appreciated on a smear examination of the peripheral blood or bone marrow. Blast cells with round or kidney-shaped nuclei with comparatively more cytoplasm than in ALL and prominent nucleoli along with 
fine granules are characteristic histological features of acute myelogenous leukemia. Blast cell counts of 20% or more either in the peripheral blood or the bone marrow is necessary for the diagnosis of acute myelogenous leukemia. For cases with lower blast cell count, which is less than 20%, a diagnosis of AML can still be made if there is presence of any one of the following three types of cytogenetic abnormalities. They are translocation 1517, translocation 821, or inversion 16. The myeloblast can have two to four prominent nucleoli with granular cytoplasm containing azurophilic granules. Abnormal azurophilic granules form R rods, which is the most definitive sign of myeloid differentiation. The R rods are splinter shaped or rod shaped structures in the cytosol of myeloblast. They are fused azurophilic granules. They are only present in the M2 and M3 subtypes of AML. They are not present in the myeloblasts of chronic myelogenous leukemia even when they transform into an acute blast crisis. Clusters of R rods are known as faggots and faggots are seen in, in close to 50% or more of the cases of acute myelogenous leukemia. Here is another histopathological slide showing the peripheral blood with promyelocytes filled with R rods in acute promyelocytic leukemia. The neoplastic promyelocyte has numerous splinter shaped inclusions in the cytoplasm as shown here representing R rods. Monoblasts Monoblasts have folded or lobulated nuclei and they do not have R rods and are not myeloperoxidase positive. They are identified by staining for nonspecific esterases. The nonspecific esterases are positive in the variants M3, M4, and M5 of the AML. Acute myelogenous leukemia may have atypical presentations like subleukemic leukemia or aleukemic leukemia. Subleukemic leukemia is characterized by the presence of leukemic cells in the peripheral blood but the total leukocyte count is normal, whereas aleukemic leukemia is characterized by the presence of leukemia in which the leukemic cells or the blast cells are absent in the peripheral blood. The majority of the subtypes are positive for CD13, CD33, CD34, and CD117 along with HLA-DR positivity. But the best CD marker for myeloid cells is CD117. Histochemistry Myeloblasts are myeloperoxidase positive and is found in the peroxidase positive granules. This is the most specific marker for acute myelogenous leukemia. They are periodic acid shift negative. The terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase is a DNA polymerase expressed in immature pre-B and pre-T lymphoid cells but is absent in the myeloid cells. Hence the TDT can be seen and is expressed in acute lymphoblastic leukemia but is negative in acute myelogenous leukemia. This enzyme adds N-terminal nucleotides in the VDJ exons enabling junctional diversity. Here is a histopathological image of the peripheral blood in acute myelogenous leukemia. In comparison to lymphoblasts, myeloblasts have delicate nuclear chromatin, prominent nucleoli, and granular cytoplasm containing azurophilic granules. Here is another image which shows the characteristic staining in the ink dot or ink blood pattern due to the staining of the myeloperoxidase enzyme. Panel B here shows Sudan black staining the primary granules in acute myelogenous leukemia. Here is another histopathological image where the blue color is due to the staining of chloroacetoacetate esterase which is present in the neutrophils whereas the red brown staining is conclusive of nonspecific esterases which are present in monocytes. Here is another histopathological image of the M6 variant of the acute myelogenous leukemia. 
which is diffusely positive for per iotic acid shift stain, the only variant where pass is positive. Further tests. Cerebrospinal fluid analysis is relevant for diagnosis and treatment of leukemic meningitis. A chest x-ray can show mediastinal mass. In the case of thymic infiltration, which occurs primarily in T cell variant of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In rare cases of AML, this can come out to be positive. There can also be mediastinal lymphadenopathy. An abdominal ultrasound can show organ enlargement, especially the liver and spleen. The most common congenital acute myelogenous leukemia, especially seen in infants, is the M5 variant of the AML, that is acute monocytic leukemia. The most common AML in children is an M7 acute megakaryoblastic leukemia, especially those with Down syndrome. The most common translocation associated with therapy-related AML is a translocation 911, which results in the MLL gene rearrangements on the chromosome 11 